Hello students and welcome to chapter 14 which is entitled The Coming of War in which we talk about the events that lead up to uh, World War II. So we're going to start a discussion talking about the fact that in the 1920s there were many totalitarian states that came about in the world and this was brought on for a couple of reasons. Number one, the bitterness caused by the Treaty of Versailles, which ended World War I and was very, very harsh on Germany and the losing countries, and also the worldwide Great Depression that had been going on. So for these reasons, totalitarian, totalitarian states formed. These are basically dictatorships. It's where a single party or leader controls every aspect of your life. The first one was in 1917 when Vladimir Lenin took control in Russia and made it a communist nation. We'll talk about we'll talk more about communism as time goes on. So we're going to talk about three main dictators that came to power during this time and the first one is Joseph Stalin in Russia and at this time you can press pause and look at page 437 in your textbook. Now <clears throat> Joseph Stalin did things like uh, for example killed around 10 million of his own people in order to stay in power he was cruel, ruthless, and tyrannical. And these are traits that dictators have. These are traits that the leaders of these totalitarian states had. There's a picture of Joseph Stalin. The next one we're going to talk about is Benito Mussolini, which took control in Italy. He formed what he called the Fascist Party in 1919. He gave himself the title of Il Duce, which means the leader, when he took control of the country in 1922. He outlawed political parties and formed secret police. Again, things that dictators do, totalitarian states do to stay in power. He wanted to get rid of the opposition, and he wanted the secret police to help him stay in power. And here's a picture of Benito Mussolini. That brings us also to the most well-known and probably the most infamous, and that's Adolf Hitler. And now would be a good time to pause the video and look at page 438 in your textbook. He, of course, took control of Germany. He was a veteran of World War I. During World War I, he had suffered a gas attack as he was a messenger running messages back and forth between trenches. And he spent the rest of the war in a hospital. And he felt very, very betrayed by the Treaty of Versailles because he said that himself and many others in Germany had given their lives, had given so much, and then Germany had basically surrendered everything that was near and dear to them in the Treaty of Versailles. After World War I, he joined the Nazi Party. He did not start the Nazi Party. It had already been, uh, it had already existed. He soon, however, took control and tried to take over the government shortly after that, and for that was put in prison. While he was in prison, he wrote a book called Mein Kampf, which translates into English as My Struggle, and basically outlined every one of his plans that he would, he would later execute in that book. However, no one really took him serious. They didn't think he was powerful enough to do these things, and nothing was done about it at the time. Hitler was very anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic is a term that you need to know, which means that he hated Jews, and he blamed them for the, the bad conditions in Germany, and blamed them for uh, causing them to lose World War I. By 1935, he had risen all the way to basically the supreme dictator of Germany, and he was not hit the full... Uh, scope of his evil deeds were not known at this time. For example, he was even Time Magazine's Man of the Year in the United States. And in 1936, Berlin hosted the Olympic Games. So at this time, he was not looked on by the world as an evil man. His deeds would come to light later on. He rebuilt the German army and the economy. Both of these violated the Treaty of Versailles, but again made Hitler very popular. And there is a picture of Adolf Hitler. This ends the first part of the lecture. Thank you for watching.